Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. So today we're taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy A53, a very solid mid-ranger that seems to pack quite a punch, at least when you don't compare it to the A52s. But all jokes aside, even as somebody who uses an iPhone 13 Pro as their daily driver, I was pleasantly surprised with the performance I got on the A53. Like, this? is mid-range, <laughs> that's insane. And personally, I'm not somebody who likes to stick to a brand for long periods of time. I usually jump between iPhones and Galaxy smartphones every few years, and my last experience with a Samsung flagship being the S10 Plus. And after having used the Samsung A53 for a few months now, I can easily say that the performance on this mid-ranger is on par, or maybe even better than my previous flagship. So yeah, with all that being said, let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to be talking about is the build quality. Now obviously since this is a more budget friendly and cost effective phone, it's not going to have the best build quality. With that being said, it has a completely plastic back and on the sides even though it looks and feels like metal it is made out of plastic but personally that's not a big issue for me since i always use cases on my phone but if you're the kind of person who likes to use their phone bare with very little protection the plastic does take away that ultra premium feeling you get like with the flagships but the good news is this is not a cheap feeling phone um, it's not the most premium, but it still has a very good weight and feel to it. And you don't ever have to worry about it shattering in case you drop it. So there is that. As for the design, you do get the exact same chassis and body as you can find on the A52s from last year. Now that isn't necessarily a bad thing because the design is still modern and sleek. But let's do a quick comparison with Samsung's current flagship, the S22 Plus. Now, as you can see, the design is very similar. You get the same camera layout on the back with three cameras on the upper left side. You get the same um, Infinity O display with that hole punch cut out and very thin bezels. But, but of course, you know, this is going to feel much more premium because of that glass back and the bezels on the front are also much thinner. So yeah. But what's important here is that you are getting a very modern looking smartphone going in to 2023. Let's talk about the body itself first. So up front, you get that big, beautiful display. You get a hole punch camera cut out for the selfie camera. You get very thin bezels surrounding the display, but on the bottom, you get a very slightly thicker chin, but it's barely noticeable. On the left side and top side, you don't really have all that much going on, but on the right side, you do get the volume rocker and the lock button, which is very nicely placed because you never have to readjust um, holding the phone to be able to reach those three buttons. On the bottom, you do get a SIM card slot that will allow you to either put in two SIM cards or one SIM card and a micro SD card slot. Yes, ladies and gentlemen we have expandable storage that is amazing <laughs> you also get the bottom speaker and a usb-c port that will allow up to 25 watts of charging now that is definitely not the fastest but not the slowest either and on the back you have three cameras you get an ultra wide a regular wide and a macro camera the one over here is a depth camera but we'll get to the cameras in a bit now let's talk about the best thing about the A53, which is that beautiful 6.5 inch full HD plus super AMOLED display. Samsung really knows what they're doing when it comes to their displays and thank God they don't cheap out on their mid-range devices. But this panel isn't new by any means because it is the exact same panel you can find on the A52s, but nevertheless, it's still a fantastic looking display. Colors are really good, everything is sharp. It's just perfect for media consumption. And it's incredibly smooth because of that 120 hertz refresh rate. Now I have said in the past that having a high refresh rate isn't necessarily a need, it's more of a luxury. And I still stand by that, but it is still a delight feature to have, especially on a phone of this price range. 
The A53 also gets very bright, up to 800 nits, so using this phone outside will not be a problem. As for the speakers, you get two and they sound pretty good. You get one on the bottom and one up top right above the selfie camera. Now they do get pretty loud and the overall sound quality is also pretty good. Okay, so let's talk performance. This is where it gets a little tricky with the A53 because this is um, compared a lot to the A52S and that's because the older model had a Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset and this one ships with Samsung's processors, the Exynos 1280. But before that, let's talk RAM options. So if you get the base model 128 gigabyte version, you, you're gonna get six gigabytes of RAM. And if you upgrade to the 256 gigabyte version, you also get more RAM at eight gigabytes. But anyway, based off of comparisons online between the Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset and the Exynos chipset, it's more or less neck and neck. It's kind of on par. So that's why people are calling it a downgrade, I guess, because you're not getting a massive spec bump. But it's also important to note what you're gonna use the phone for, right? So for me, um, I, I haven't had any kind of issue with the phone yet in terms of performance. I had this minor hiccup in the beginning when I first started using it. Um, there was some stutters and lag navigating the UI, but once I updated the software, it more or less fixed the problem. So that's very important. Once you get this phone updated to the latest software available. Now for me, this seems like a perfect everyday phone and by that i mean you know like using it for social media scrolling on twitter instagram watching tiktoks youtube netflix uh, doing some light photo editing checking your emails it can do all of that without skipping a beat so the exynos 1280 chip isn't going to hold you back there you don't have to worry about that in terms of gaming performance i don't think i'm the best person to go to for that because i only very rarely play games on my phone. Maybe I'll download an emulator and play a Pokemon game every now and then, which it's completely able to do, by the way. But I did try out Call of Duty Mobile and, and it was fine. It played it perfectly without any stutters. I tried Genshin Impact as well, and this is where it does struggle a bit, but that didn't really surprise me because it is a very demanding game. But under lower settings, it is playable. But the question here is why, right? Why should you get the A53 over the A52S? Why not just get the A52S and save some money? Well, you definitely could, and you'd still be getting a fantastic phone. For me, I would choose the A53 because it was promised four years of software updates and five years of security updates. The A52S was released in September of 2021. So, and it was promised three years of software updates. So right now, if you're planning to get it for 2023, you're barely looking at two years, not even two years of software updates left. So regardless of specs on paper, the A53 is just gonna last you much longer. And in terms of the Exynos and Qualcomm chipset issue debacle, this is just my opinion on it, but a lot of countries ship Samsung flagship phones with Exynos processors, like here in Asia and some other regions as well. I think Europe, I believe. But yes, they ship with Exynos processors. For example, the S22 Plus that I showed earlier ships with, a, with an Exynos 2200 rather than a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip. Now, my point being, just because this is one of the first phones that are released in the US with an Exynos chip doesn't mean it's going to be bad. So next up, we have the cameras. This is my favorite part of most phones. Uh, you get a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 64 megapixel regular wide camera, a five megapixel macro, and a 32 megapixel front camera. Now I feel like the cameras are truly what divide mid-range phones from flagships. The cameras on these mid-rangers are usually just okay. But I was pleasantly surprised again by the cameras on this. I took this on a trip to Singapore and another trip to Bohol here in the Philippines and the pictures turned out really well. I 
was really impressed with the main camera on this phone it captured a lot of detail it was very sharp and you don't even need to go into portrait mode to get a really good background separation which was nice now when i travel i love to shoot ultra wide and the ultra wide on this albeit good was very dependent on very good lighting so when you're in a less ideal situation it tends to fall apart really quickly whereas on the main camera it can adjust really easily to lower light situations and you still get a great shot with a lot of detail but if there is good lighting then shooting on the ultra wide is really fun portrait mode on this was actually really good i was really impressed with the edge detection even though it's just digital bokeh it still looked very natural which is also a plus just don't max out uh the the blurriness and you should be fine just stick around like two to four as for the video specs you'll be able to shoot up to 4k 3d frames per second with that main camera and honestly this is something i was a little disappointed with i think this is a much better photo camera than it is a video camera but still you'll still be able to get decent video with that main wide of course you're going to see a gradual loss in quality once you start zooming in as for the 33 megapixel front facing camera, it is really good. Uh, you'll be able to capture all the selfies with that. And of course, you'll be able to shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second as well. In terms of battery life, the A53 has a 5000 mAh battery, which is slightly bigger than the A52S's battery. Now, one of the advantages of that 5 nanometer Exynos 1280 design is that it is more power efficient so you should be able to get more battery life with that and in my experience the battery life on this is really really good like at the end of the day I still have about 30% 20 max um, I've never had to charge it within the day either and if you use it lightly like if you're not glued to your phone like I am um, this will definitely last you two days so in terms of battery life the A53 has amazing battery life so do i think the a53 is a good phone going into 2023 yes i think it is a fantastic phone for the price its capabilities and the fact that it's gonna last so long in terms of software updates honestly it blows my mind how good these mid-rangers are whether it's the a53 or the pixel 6a they just hold up really really well compared to uh, flagship devices and i think honestly like flagship processors are like completely overpowered we're never really gonna max them out especially if you're just doing regular things on a day-to-day -day basis you know if you're not pushing your phone you're just using social media taking casual photos yeah these are really really good phones and you don't have to spend twice or thrice the amount of money so yeah that is pretty much that for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you guys have any questions about the a53 or maybe even the pixel 6a in comparison leave a comment down below and i will see you guys in the next video